with MOOCs, it's an unprecedented phenomenon in some ways, right? You're talking to anyone in the world who wants to join the class can join, so there's no selectivity, and those classes are enormous. And so that's going to prompt everyone to sort of rethink everything they've been doing. Um, that can be good, right? We can shed some bad practices, but I think there's a real danger that it could be bad because there's a really strong tradition of uh, academic freedom in the classroom, and that tradition is underwritten by very important legal doctrines um, in the Copyright Act, uh, Section 110 about education, and, and, and those specific doctrines, though, have a shaky relationship with MOOC teaching. Um, but one doctrine that does not necessarily, or shouldn't in my view, have a shaky relationship with MOOCs is fair use. And so my message uh, as I'm talking to Dartmouth uh, today is going to be that you should take those fair use rights very seriously and assert them as clearly uh, and coherently and as soon as possible so that as the MOOC phenomenon evolves, those rights aren't eroded. Things that are made from now on will be born digital, right? They'll be digital from the get-go, and we'll have some idea of how to treat them, right? Who gets to use them, you know, who gets access to them. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll have some idea, at least, a clearer idea, but there are millions upon millions of objects in library collections that were created before the advent of digital technology, and whose creators are gone. Uh, the authors are dead and who knows who their heirs are, or the publishers are defunct and who knows whether the rights were sold. No one certainly wrote in their contract, here's what happens to my digital rights in 1930, right? Um, and so here we are with this stockpile of really interesting stuff and it is pre-digital and the rights situation is completely vexed and yet to make all that stuff comprehensible, accessible uh, to modern research tools and to modern researchers who want not only to access in the sense of like, I want to just read the thing even though I'm not in town, right? But also that they want to do new modes of research that require digitization. So these guys that want to crawl huge corpora of digitized text right, every single play written from 1920 to 1970 to look for words, to look for grammatical trends and things like that. That research requires, of course, digitization. But no one has, you know, has prior to the, you know, the advent of digital technology, no one planned for that. <laughs> and so we have to figure out what rights do libraries have, what rights can they assert, and when they don't have the rights they need, who can they partner with, and so on, um, in order to create these new resources and bring those materials into the 21st century.